Okay, so a little bit of a different one today. This is a customer's canopy. Uh, he's just had it custom made and it's been delivered to, to my place to have a fit out. So the customer wants this as it's a slide on and off canopy. He wants this to be self-sufficient as in its own power. So um, that is what the uh, canopy mob installed. That is just power to the central locking unit. Um, so we'll leave that one alone. So basically we'll show you inside. He's, this is uh, what he's already installed. So he's installed these two uh, fridges. Idea being is that one's gonna be a fridge, that one's a freezer. Um, around the other side, he has installed a King's uh, control panel. Um, I'm not that keen on King's, to be honest, um, but for, for the money, the customer was happy just to, to go with that. Um, the one thing he did do, which I quite like, is if I undo this screw, he's put it on the hinges. So you can just open it up and get inside for your connections and to add uh, powers for additional lighting later down the stage and that. So I think that's quite a nice little touch that he's done. Um, so yeah, and then he's got his little drawers as well. This is exactly where he wanted everything to be. Um, this is his layout. So I've just got to work with it. So we got ahead and ordered the battery. It's already got, he's already installed a, uh, a fold out solar panel that he already had lying around. So he's made that work. So we just got to incorporate that. So we've gone with the ATG uh, batteries brand. Uh, they're based in Perth. Um, I haven't done any videos on these guys um, and their batteries, but I have bought over just the last, I'd say six, seven months, I've bought probably about 20 batteries for customers vehicles and all the feedback is they're brilliant. They're really good and for the price as well. So these are around the, the $1,200 mark. They do have sales on now and again. You can see them online. Uh, great bunch of guys. Uh, customer service is really good. Now the, the batteries are designed by them, but the components are shipped in from, from China just to keep the prices down. Um, but so far so good. And it has the, uh, the Bluetooth functionality. So you've got all your, on your app, you've got all the data. So um, you can see how much life's in the battery, etc., and see how much current's flowing. So, um, so yeah, I'm well impressed with them so far for the prices that they sell them for. So uh, check them out. I'll put a link in the description, ATG batteries. Um, they're also under a different brand name, Access Antennas. Um, but yeah, just search ATG batteries and check them out. They're really good. So anyway, this is a 200 amp hour slimline. Reason we went slimline is because of the layout, we didn't have any space. So my task was to figure out how to get a battery down there. So the measurements with the 200 amp hour was 110 mil wide and we had 112 mil wide. So the battery fitted, but every kind of um, tray or battery mount wouldn't. But I found this one. This one's from uh, Kickass, um, Australia, and this is suited for their 170 amp hour um, AGM slimline batteries. But this battery, the ATG, fits in here perfectly. So that's the tray with the straps. It did have. I've had to modify it slightly, so it did have this section on there. And that was for the uh, for the strap. I'm holding it around the wrong way, probably. Um, for the strap. Problem being is, once that leapt over, I couldn't physically get the battery in or out. So I cut that off, but I left these little slots. And I'm just going to um, put the straps through and screw it down. Because we've got a beam running right across the back. So I could screw to the back there. So it worked out really well. Uh, I didn't film it because I wasn't actually going to film this fit out um but i thought well we might as well um it might might come in handy for someone so uh yeah we'll, we'll do step by step with this one so the the tray's all fitted in it's a real snug fit but 
it works and we don't lose any space because that was a complete bit of dead space there. So I'm really happy that we could make that battery work. So for the um, power side of it, we're going with the Red Arc uh, BC DC 1240D. So it's a 40 amp charger um, just for the size of the, uh, for the battery. And the idea being is the unit is gonna be mounted up on the panel like so. And then all the wiring will be inside the box to keep it all nice and neat and the customer can still see what's going on at the front. It would be so much better if it's that way because there's already a hole there, but that's fine. There's a hole around the side. So that's gonna keep all this nicely tidy uh, and all together. Um, then we've gone for a triple Anderson. And the idea is it's gonna go in this little canopy like that. And then on the outside, this is gonna be right there. So when the tray gets put onto the, um, onto the Ute, which is a uh, Isuzu D-Max, brand new one, uh, it will slide on and then the Anderson plug from the D-Max that we'll hardwire in direct from the battery plus an ignition trigger, hence why the three pin Anderson, because it's got a smart alternator, will then just slot and plug straight in. Similar to that one, but this is surface mounted. So that will keep it really nice, nice and neat, I think. So let's sit like that. So it makes this completely portable without um, too much work is the idea. So um, it just makes life a little bit easier for the customer um loading and unloading so anyway that's that bit done i'm gonna stop rambling um what we do next is we'll get the battery in then we're gonna get this dc to dc charger mounted and then i'm gonna do that then i'll film wiring it all in to basically um so it's all hidden behind here and i'll show you what size fuses and stuff like that how i do it um so yeah these panels are pretty much depending on the brand they're all much of a muchness really uh the layouts are very similar so um yeah i'll do that next and then um we can incorporate our solar as well um all into that one unit so it just keeps it really really nice and neat and tidy so uh yeah we'll crack on with that bit next okay so dc charges on stainless steel nuts and bolts there is there and the battery is in that was a nice tight squeeze surprisingly heavy for a lithium um, and really awkward but it's in and we've used the original straps and bolted it down the back so it's nice and tight and then I've just put some split conduit around the uh, around the tray just because the positive is really close um, just to give that a little bit of uh, extra protection so uh, so yeah that's all in and the cable goes through one of these little pre-made grommets straight through and what we'll do now is start connecting it up so we'll open it up and Put that in place there's the wire in there so first thing we're going to do is start with small ones so the orange and the green will change the profile depending on what chemistry you're running so whether it's gel agm lead acid lithium and here's the little sheet that tells you how to do it so you've got different profiles depending on the chemistry of the battery where you've got obviously a lithium so all we need to do is connect the orange and the green together. We'll cut them down short, join them together, solder heat shrink, tape them up. And then that will set the charger into lithium mode. So really simple. And obviously the blue is for our ignition trigger because the Isuzu uh, D-Max has a smart alternator. So we just need to have an ignition trigger power that up, which is gonna be coming from the Anderson plug. That's 
power, battery power, battery earth, and then our ignition trigger, or well, that way around, sorry. Um, and then that will power up the DC charger and make the smart alternator charger is uh, at its uh, best possible charge rate. So we'll do that next. Okay, so that's soldered together. That's now set the DC charger into lithium. Next we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna connect up the earth and our power. And um, obviously we still need to connect to this solar panel. And this has its own little solar controller, which we need to bypass and remove. So it's a direct raw power from the panel down into the DC charger. If I was to leave that in line, then it wouldn't charge. This uh, regulator, solar regulator, would fight with the DC charger and basically won't do anything. So uh, the DC charger needs raw power. So uh, we'll adapt that and uh, get that connected up. So we've just drilled out the rivets that was holding the, uh, the solar controller up on the panel. And there it is. So this is our solar panel going into the regulator and then coming out, which runs down to an Anderson. We're gonna put a, um, a rooftop gland and drill down. So all we need to do to bypass this is to cut that wire and join that wire to there and just remove this unit, job done, and then run that through. Um, I've also drilled the holes and the cable entry for our Anderson. So right there, that's gonna sit over. Silicon that as well to keep it all watertight. So, and that's from the inside. So once this box is back in, you're never gonna see that. I haven't decided how I'm gonna route the cables in. Originally, I was gonna drill straight through the box. Now, I might come up and have a gland come out of here, because there's already a hole right there going into the box. So I'm just weighing that up. Uh, we've also connected up the earth from the DC charger. This is our main power that's going to be coming into the box from the battery and our negative that runs down. And then also this is our brown wire from the DC charger. That is the power from the vehicle going into the DC charger, going out to charge our lithium battery. I could have just connected that brown wire straight to this buzz bar. Um, because this is going to the battery. Just me, whether it's right or not, I always like to have any kind of charge, i.e. a DC charger, to go direct to the battery, and then anything we're powering comes off the battery. So you could just cheat, just bolt it straight on there, job done, because we've already got our line running through, but I'd like to have the DC charger to go straight to the battery, and then the power from the battery comes out to this control box. Um, so there's our cables there, and I've just mounted two MIDI fuse holders. Um, once that box is back up, I'll show you that bit, so it just it's a little bit clearer. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna um, do that solar, drill a hole, gland, run that through, and then we can do all our final connections inside the box. So we'll get on to that next. All right, extended that, bypassed it, soldered, heat shrunk running through a twin five mil cable, rated at 30 amps. So I've already drilled the hole in the roof. I decided to put it through the roof and we're gonna use this gland and sealant just to seal that off. And then here's our Anderson plug all done. While we've got the sealant out, we're gonna beat the sealant around that and uh, nut and bolt that on. And uh, we'll move on to the next stage. Uh, that's all mounted now, right there. Looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And extended that. I've done the roof gland there. Don't know if you could see that. Coming through. And that is right there. And there's my cable. 
ready to go. That's from the Anderson. Just filled up um, the hole with uh, silicon, uh, roof and gutter sealer. And then the actual base, I used a 11FC uh, Sikaflex. So we're nice and watertight, so water can't bead in behind there. So that's all ready to go. Next stage is we're gonna run these cables up behind and then I wanna do another little gland coming out here to then go into the box and the solar can come in with it. So uh, we'll get that bit done next. All right, gland fitted, cables running in, solar in, just P-clip that up, trying to make it look as neat as possible. There's all our cables here. So now we'll get to uh, connecting up all the DC charger and uh, move on to the next stage. All right, everything's connected up. So we've got our red coming from the outside Anderson plug, power in from the vehicle. That joins to the red of the DC charger. We've got our negative from the Anderson plug going up to the negative buzz bar. Then we've got our trigger, ignition trigger, because it's a smart alternator, joining the blue of the DC charger. So solar is coming off of our twin round joining into the yellow of the DC charger and then earth straight to the earth buzz bar. So we'll just make that all look a little bit um, pretty, put it in conduit, cable tie it all up and um, then I'll connect up all my connections through the uh, midi fuses to the battery and then we can test it all. And there's an additional two fuses that we've ran and that runs around to the fridges which we'll go around and show you now. Uh, pet kangaroo there and the wiring runs around let me get sorry about the picture and that runs around and there's two Andersons around the back and then that is for the travel buddy um, oven that the guy wants to have sitting up top or down here once he gets this little area sorted and we'll just switch on the fridges and one's going to be used as a fridge one's going to be used as a uh, as a freezer so they're all on that's it and there it is there so that's everything back together panel screw back on just covered up that king's label with a red arc sticker that comes with the dc charger um so yeah everything's all ready all cleaned ready for uh pickup from the customer and the fridges are running right now the both of them and this is the app with the atg uh, batteries that you can uh, download and have all live data so we click on that and this is the um the 200 amp hour battery running right now so we're pulling 11 literally 12 amps at the moment getting them fridges down to temperature um i mean it is it's about 30 32 degrees today um so uh yeah they've got a bit of work to do but that's all your live datas and then you can change the parameters etc and um, if you've got multiple batteries you can scroll through and um, it gives you estimated empty time and your state of charge remaining uh, capacity so it's it's pretty user friendly especially for someone that's just needs to know the basics uh, whilst they're out and about so uh, so yeah i highly recommend the atg batteries and uh, we'll we can uh, drop you a link if you need to uh, if you want to go and check out their website so uh, so yeah we're all good to go all done um hope this has helped you tackle it yourselves rather than paying someone like me to do it uh, it is fairly simple it's just time consuming um, but easily achievable as long as you fuse everything you should be safe so uh, yeah please uh, leave a comment if you want to uh, see anything else and um, like it and subscribe that really helps and uh, yeah we'll crack on with the, the next video cheers